still does have his rain jacket on. He must have been particularly cold, but coming into the closing 500 metres now, the gradients are going to move up from here over 20%, and you just can't be tempted into making your effort too early. Has Stephen Williams drifted back slightly on the right-hand side there? He has a bit. Stephen Williams just on the wheel of Santiago Buitrago. Look at the focus on the face of the Colombian sat in the saddle. As they round the corner, Vaculan there, riders are starting to lose contact as the ferocious slopes start to rear their head. The last 400 metres, 19%, and it is a Latvian on the front. What a ride this has been so far by the man. The former national champion of Latvia sat in the centre. Scoin still set in the tempo. There's no move being made. It looks like it's Cosnefire winding things up on the right-hand side. Still anybody's race, Dan. Yeah, it is Cosnefire on the right-hand side. It looks like Scoin, he was on the front for a long time. It's a bit more cagey now. Is it Stornum? It's it on the left-hand side. It's a, we've got Richard Carapaz. Oh, that's Tobias Johansson, of course, for Uno X on the right-hand side of screen as we speak, but still very tentative. They're doing the right thing. Here goes Stephen Williams, though. Stephen Williams launches on the left-hand side. It's a one heck of a oh, move by Stephen Williams. It's like he's been launched from a rocket. What a move. 200 metres to go. Has he gone too early? He glances around. There is daylight for the Welshman. He continues to press on, and he continues to open up a gap. What a ride this is. Can he hold on? It looks like this is going to be the biggest victory of this man's career. The pursuit continues behind, but it's almost at half the speed. Vakalan opens things up. This is not over yet. He's starting to tire his Williams, weaving from left to right. Another glance behind. Desperation writ large on the face of the man for Israel Premier Tech. There's a surge from behind. Vakalan is coming, but it's going to be too late. The man from Wales is going to take the win, or is he? There's only metres to go. One more glance and victory. Here's Williams, Stevie Williams, takes the biggest win of his career in a sensational finish of a flesh wall on absolutely a superb wow mega i got two pimples goosebumps even that was uh that was incredible a guy who i've known <laughs> a long time i don't think i'm ever going to commentate again because i called it once and i can only go downhill from here but that was mega <sighs> dan what the acceleration nobody they, they they look around they just couldn't respond it was like a rocket launched on the inside I, what a, what I, a move i'm looking forward to watching it again because i thought like you initially that they just couldn't respond but looking at how much they closed in towards the end i'm wondering whether they just thought that was a little bit too early to go but before they knew it the gap was unassailable it was too big of a gap to close the vocal in second place i think it was maxim van hills who took the third step of the podium for lotto destiny uh, but Luke, you won't be coming back anyway because we don't want people on here that give no. predictions and they come correct, particularly not on your first ever effort at commentary. I'd call no, that well done. Beginner's well done. luck, actually. No, well done, Luke. A pleasure. Well, uh, definitely, thank you. Definitely a bit of luck involved there. Thank you for your insight. But what a win from Stevie Williams. He's had a great season so far, but adds a classic, an Ardennes classic to his Palmares. Stevie Williams from Aberystwyth, 27 years of age. Here's the moment, Dan. Just uh, actually. Uh, actually, let, let's uh, let's get Luke to talk us through the last few hundred metres here, because Stevie Williams lays off a little bit here. Luke, just take us talk us through the last uh, 300 metres. Yeah, here you go, light in the fuse. Um, you've seen him in decent position at the bottom, but he uh, slipped back a little bit. Was smart. The door opened, and at this point now he's fully committed. Um, but yeah, like Dan said, you, you wonder at this point if they could have reacted at all. Um, the way they went in the last hundred metres and how close. Um, they did, they did come to him. You, you think maybe they can, but here Stevie's really putting our heel down. Um, and yeah, that is, that's, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. I'm, for, once, <laughs> for once, I don't know what to say because that's a guy I've known a long time. Um, lovely bloke, much deserved. And he's shown how strong he is this year, but I think this win is, is huge. Uh, Tour Nine is a great win, but this is another level. Yeah, and, and I think it's worth echoing as well, Dan, isn't it? Or mentioning as well, for those of you who don't know, the, the career trajectory of Stevie Williams. He's had a couple of years in the injury wilderness as well, Dan. This is a real comeback. He's a rider that we know uh, back in his early days uh, riding for the GB Academy team. A lot of talent. Uh, went to Bahrain from SEG, SEG Racing. That's that one last look. The gap falls short in there. In fact, he did win it pretty comfortably. But he's not had an easy last few years. He's no. really had to battle through injury. It shows his real tenacity and class as a character. Yeah, and that will make these oh, this season feel even better for him, won't it? Like when you've had those 
those seasons where you're wondering if you're ever going to reach your potential because you've been fighting injury, you've been fighting illness. You know, there's parts of your mind. It's, it's a very lonely living as cyclists, isn't it? You, me and Luke all know. It's like you spend a lot of time on your own out training, thinking about things. Like, am I ever going to feel the way I used to? Am I ever going to get back on the top form? But when you do go through those periods and you do get back to where you feel you should be, whether that's as a helper for teammates or whether that's to winning bike races yourself, as Stephen Williams is doing, it just feels so much more gratifying because you weren't sure if you were going to get there. You know you've earned your place to get back to there. And for Stephen Williams this year, you know, this is the start of his career in many respects. And even though he's been a pro <laughs> now for a few years, he started off at Bahrain back in 2018 as a stagiaire, fully fledged pro in 2019. But he's still only 27, and I think his best years and his best wins are probably still oh, ahead of him. Totally, uh, I would agree. And, and Luke, you know, that uh, you could just see, oh, here he is, we're going to hear from the man, thankfully wrapped up against the element, still exhausted, Stephen, still bemused, but clearly what delighted. What outstanding victory today here in the Mur de Oui. Yeah, what a day, what a day. Uh, oh, I'm so happy right now. Uh, can't believe I just won flesh. Uh, I've been watching this race for years and uh, I've always wanted to come here with, with, with decent legs to, to try and win it. And uh, yeah, today with the weather, I, I, I do enjoy racing in this kind of weather. And uh, yeah, to come away with a victory and oh, I was just over the moon. Yeah, just the boys backed me all day and uh, they gave me the best chance to try and do a, a result today and uh, come away with the. Uh, the win here is special, really special. It was a terrific attack. Did you think it was possible to, to stay until the end? Uh, there was a bit of a, like a block on the road, like um, not a block, but uh, everyone was kind of waiting. I just saw the 300 to go and I thought, if I can get a jump here and, you know, put five, ten seconds into the group, then, you know, like <laughs> seeing the line in front of you, then, uh, yeah, I think it would give me a good chance to hold on. And, uh, yeah, I was looking around a bit and I was a bit like, because the legs were empty, but uh, yeah, really happy to hold on and, uh, and win. Happy but exhausted? Yeah, exhausted and uh, yeah, like, lost for words. Yeah, quite emotional really, just uh, yeah, really hard sport and uh, yeah, to win bike races is hard, um, especially uh, here in these classics, so uh, yeah, really happy. Last question, Rick, did uh, give you some advice because we know that he won here. Yeah, no, I was, I was speaking to him the last few days and, uh, you know, all the guys, you know, uh, Dylan, who's won here before uh, a few years ago, you know, to have someone who's, you know, been there and done it as well. And, uh, yeah, it's given me that confidence. And, uh, yeah, all the team is just uh, amazing. So what a day. Thank, thank you. Oh, great to hear from Stevie Williams. Still pretty bemused. I don't think he can quite believe it, but absolutely sensational. But this man has won big. Just, uh, just keeps getting better and better. And by his own admission, he also has a pretty decent quick uh, sprint. He's won a lot of races from a group. This time, this was something special and a bit different. So there we have it, Maxim van Hils congratulates Stevie Williams. I mean, just a, there's that wonderful slow-mo shot down as, as he crossed the line where there was the pain that just slowly diffused into joy and there was just a, a glimpse of a smile on his face as he was greeted by, by the team at the end. I mean, look, oh, I mean, tears. tears. Smile and it's tears. Just, it's, mate, the sport is so powerful. Look at what it's taken out of him there. Absolutely exhausted. Every single rider will feel something similar, but nobody will feel the sweetness of victory. Mm and what it means, and it especially, I think, Lou, as well, bring you back in, Luke, just the context, we, we discussed briefly this man's career so far. He's had some big wins, but he hasn't had it easy. And at 27, to win this big in these sorts of conditions is special, isn't it, mate? Yeah, you talk about, you know, we talk about adversity and what he's come back from. Um, he really was back against the wall for quite a long time. Mm. He had knee injuries that, you know, took took years to resolve, really. And he was up and down. Um, he also had a contract with B&B Hotels that fell through late on, which is the only reason he's currently at Israel, really, is that B&B folded. He had to move to, to Israel very late on in the year. Um, so, he, you know, he's, he's, he's had a lot. So to see him come through the other side is, 
you know, it's simply beautiful. And just looking at the results here, Max Van Gils was third. Um, I noticed he crossed the finish line with one glove on and nothing on the other hand. So the first, probably the first ever guy to finish on the podium of a classic with with one glove on and one glove off. Thank you for that <laughs> little bit of analysis. But yeah, just confirmation: the winner of the. 20